will be almost we'll be ready to start yeah so welcome everybody uh normally Dinesh and I get together on a Tuesday to talk about trekking in Nepal but um mm. he's been so busy this week welcoming um new groups coming to Nepal to trek with Nature Explore Trek that we actually had to postpone until today so um, and as the trekking season gets busier, I'm sure we'll have to bump a few days around as the weeks progress. My name is Michelle Hill, and um, together with my very good friend Dinesh Kaki, we are talking about trekking in Nepal. Today, we're putting the spotlight on Langtang region. Now, uh, we've talked about Everest Base Camp and we've talked about Annapurna region. But Nepal is more than just these two regions. And I think for many people, they come to Nepal because they've heard of Everest Base Camp Trek or they've heard of Annapurna. Yeah. But then they come to Nepal and they fall in love. They fall in love with how beautiful the country is and how amazing the scenery in the Himalayas is. And then they look for other areas that they can go to possibly not as well known or not as busy during peak time. So just a quick introduction for me. As I said, my name is Michelle Hill and I'm a business and travel coach. I first went to Nepal in 2015 and like most other people, uh, my first visit was a trek to Everest Base Camp. And this for me was a complete eye opener because I'd never done a long trek like this before but it was also more about not only meeting the physical challenge of getting there but the mental challenge that came with it as well and that absolute feeling of exhilaration when you achieve something like this and how it changes you and helps you to grow as a person so from that feeling um, then I came back two years later and I trekked Annapurna circuit and I probably would have come back a few years after that only um, we went through that little period called COVID and lockdown and no travel but now um, I'm planning to be back in Nepal in April next year which is very exciting and I will be trekking uh, with Dinesh on one of our uh, bespoke tours that we've organized called Discover Your Edge. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that today. We're here to talk about Lang Tang. But um, what I'll do is I'll get Dinesh to introduce himself and then we'll get into uh, finding out more about this beautiful region. Okay. Welcome to the events, everyone. My name is Dinesh Karki, those who does not hear about my name before. And I'm from the uh, Everest region of Nepal, like which is uh, located in the eastern part of uh, valley of Kathmandu. And I, I was born and brought from there. And since last 20 years, I'm working in this sector. And beginning, I started as my porter career. And after a couple of years doing this job, then I upgraded an assistant guide. Then uh, same time, at the same time, doing cook and helping people. And then finally, I became guide after seven, eight years later. And I've been working with one of the top level company in Nepal, like uh, who organized the biggest group. And I'm working with them like last 10, 12 years uh, as senior guide and with full responsibilities to control the group in mountain. Uh, not only in Nepal, we track, we lead the group in Tibet, especially in West Tibet, where is the uh, most uh, Indian pilgrims people used to go in the monsoon time. And of course, in Nepal, I did all over the trekking, like Annapurna region, Everest region, Langtang region, Mount Kanchenjunga base camp, Makalu base camp, uh, Manasalu base camp, everywhere. I would say almost everywhere. <laughs> and uh, luckily, I, I got a chance to travel in Europe uh, in 2014 and 16 twice. At the time, I did. Uh, I got a good opportunity to trek in Alps uh, in some few places. Uh, like uh, suspect with Chermat in Switzerland and some in Italy and South France. It's so beautiful. It's good memories and experience also. And the last eight years, we, are, we won our own trekking company, Nature Explore Trek, with my friends uh, who are work, we work before together as a guide. Now also we are guides, so we do, uh, we were working like 80 years now. 
And we're running this natural isotope training very smoothly until now. And we got a very good feedback until today, like hundred, couple of hundred people are giving good feedbacks and that makes us really good encouraging to work more and so happy. And that's, I want to uh, leave my words now for about me. So yeah, will you continue? <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, that was really interesting. And um, I was just having a little chuckle to myself because when you were talking about all the different areas that you've trekked in Nepal and you said you've been everywhere, um, the, in Australia, there's a there's a very old song and one of the line it, it goes along the lines of I've been everywhere, man, I've been everywhere. So that was kind of running through my head when you were talking about that. So Lang Tang. Whereabouts is Langtang located and how does one get there? Uh, Langtang is uh, from Kathmandu Valley. It is north, north from here. And it is not a far uh, like Everest or Annapurna. Well, Annapurna and Langtang, I would say not, not it's, it's border, you know. So yeah. north from Kathmandu Valley, uh, beginning we drive like 150 kilometers to our beginning trek. We start yeah. to where we start to walk. And Langtang is one of the popular trekking destinations after Everest and Annapurna right. because it is very sweet and short and sweet trekking trail and no, and, and also the close from Kathmandu. So yeah. it is not a, the if we look from the way of transportations and distance and this is very comfortable for people, those who are looking easy and short trekking in beginners. Right. Yeah? So when you say short and sweet, how many days tre trekking would you do on most of the treks in Langtang? Well, Langtang, uh, Langtang region gives a couple of trekking trails, like uh, namely uh, Tamang Heritage Trail, yeah. Langtang Valley Trekking Trail, and uh, Langtang Valley Trek with Gosai Kunda Lake Trail, and then uh, Halambu side trek. So if we talk about Langtang Valley, it is only one week trek, right. including okay. travel from Kathmandu to Kathmandu, yeah? Right. So we take like uh, six to seven days, and we trek like four or five hours a day, and we spend like a, a couple of nights in the valley before we get to the, our last destination to explore the mountain of Langtang Lirung, which is 7,200 meter high, Gang yeah. Tempu, uh, 6,400 meter high. And then, of course, Langtang is culturally and uh, the naturally more beautiful. Along okay. the way, we cross so many nice things like uh, cultural, Buddhist culture, nature, and flora fonda and birds uh, are like, you know, like wildlife. These are the more important and really popular and people, these things are offering people to visit there. Right. So it is six to seven days trip. Okay. So um, I know for a lot of people, particularly if you're, um, if they're coming to Nepal for the first time and they're trekking, one of the things that people worry about is altitude sickness. So when you do this, when you do the treks around this region, what's the highest altitude that you go to? On this trek, we will not be that much higher. We just will reach uh, uh, nearly 4,000 meter. Right. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I, sorry uh, 4,500 meter, I mean. Right, okay. 3,700 meter where we stay overnight. And next day we hike a little bit uh, for acclimatize, yeah. not for acclimatize, of course, for the good view. So yeah. we, we climb the good view to call Kenjingri viewpoint. It is 4,800 meter high uh, from where we see a 360 degree panoramic view of uh, Langtang Valley's mountains. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're not really spending a lot of time at very high altitudes like no. some of the other treks. So does that mean that when you do a trek like this, perhaps you'd be less likely to have severe symptoms of altitude sickness? Um, sometimes some people get at the end of the day where we spend overnight in Kangjingri. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we weren't staying like, we weren't going further or staying after that place because that was the last place where we spent night and come back down. Yeah. So people will get like that bad, worsely uh, altitude on this yeah. trek. Yeah. Okay, cool. And also if someone get like kind of a problem, they, they can come quickly yes. down because the, the trail is like a quick descent down. Right. Okay. Yeah. So so even if you start to really feel quite ill, um, it's easy to get back down to an altitude where um, things can get back to normal. Yeah. 
quickly we can skip the altitude because in the couple of hours we can go go down 400 meter easily so that means uh, it's, it will help a lot to people get recovered and yeah. forget about altitude okay so when i was having a look because as i said i've i've never been to that region but i was i was having a little look at some of the information about it and um in the 2015 earthquake this was a region that was quite badly affected yes it's a so sort of tragedy and really sad history in 2015 in april 25 it was a bad day in Langtang valley you, you know the you know the Langtang Langtang village is the most popular town of that region yeah. where the more than uh, more than 500 population settled and they have like they are like a history they have a home and uh, all the culture and monasteries domestic animals like security all these facilities were there but unfortunately after hitting the that uh, nearly eight magnitude uh, earthquake in nepal the, it was the uh, one of the memories and biggest hitting in langtang there is the mountain and the hillside of course uh, the part of the langtang leading mountain the yeah. glacier is break down and come down and sweep the whole village. There is not one, even one single house was standing because of it is cleaning by the landslide. After shaking from the uh, earthquake, they just break that ice, like big mountains, come down and nobody was, nobody, no, any local people, no one is thinking about that mountain is break and come down. No, and then, it would have happened very quickly too, wouldn't it? Yes, it is very quickly. And then the, the village and the mountains, has age, you know, that the river was not far from the village after the mountain. And then they're just so clean down to the river. And then there's so many people who died and lots of people lost their uh, families, home and everything. And of, of course, there are so many tourists like trekking. That was the time of trekking also in April, yeah. another yeah. second season of Nepal. So there were so many trekkers also died and guides. Many, many people were died because yeah. it was in the daytime. And Langtang is a popular place, and some people stop for rest and for lunch and for overnight, of course. And uh, the, the cake, they count nearly more than 200 people, local people died, and more than 50 people were foreigners, and another 20, 25 guides. And another, there, there was army camp, Nepal army camp, and all the army, army were died because yeah. of it. Coincidentally, it happened, and it is very sad history. Now, the 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 old Langtang, the where the landslide was happened, there is like kind of it's now like sea. There's like all the stones and you know like nothing left. People cannot wow. rebuild in that same place. But so they, re they rebuilt in the same place. No, they could not because it's not possible. Right. They they, they rebuilt a little further up. Okay. Just like uh, another half an hour further on the other hillside. Right. It looks a little more safe also now. Yeah. Before and now. And now all they settled everything, but they had a bad history. Yeah. Yes. So so really, um, if if we can tell people how beautiful this region is, and encourage people to come and explore, then that will help the ongoing rebuilding process of the whole area. Because like when trekkers and tourists come, obviously. You're putting money into the economy and then that can help people rebuild i'm angry with you yes yes yeah because even though like it's it's eight years ago like that i could imagine there's still a lot of rebuilding and um also just from a, um the people's perspective like from their own thoughts and feelings and how they feel about it there would still be a lot to be done yeah yeah because yeah. i yeah as i said i 2015 was the first time um i came to nepal and i came in september time and um even like when we trekked to um everest base camp you know some of the the bridges were that were broken and some of the tracks there was little landslides and different things that we had to go around um but I wasn't I wasn't in Langtang region to see you know that, yeah. but you could see how much the whole country had been impacted as well. It is, it is, yeah. yeah. We need to talk about something a little bit, <laughs> a 
little bit lighter then. Um, so out of out of the different treks within the region, which one is your favorite and why? Um, I like, of course, the Langtang Valley Trek because it gives uh, so many different informations and I'm so, so happy to take people there when I'm guiding and when I'm guiding even now. Yeah. So there is like of uh, three, four trails, including Langton Valley. Among of them, I like, uh, of course, all of them, but if we need to select one, then I would say Langton Valley Trek because mm -hmm. in beginning of trek, you will walk through the forest and the river, the beautiful through the beautiful nature. While you're walking through the nature, you will see so many different wildlife, uh, including different species of birds, flowers, okay. mm -hmm. and the rivers. Uh, we cross so many times the so suspension bridge, and it makes different fun. On the way, we will stop in the small like tea houses and nearby the rivers. And we have also a lot of chance to see the behave. And oh, okay. It, yeah, and then the, sometime we can see the life, they're making the uh, honey. Yeah. By the people with their, their dress, like a village type of dress. Yeah. And it makes so different fun. And when we get to the Langtang village, Langtang area, we leave the forest behind of us and then we race up to the mountains. Yeah. So then we start to see the mountains uh, from the, especially from Langton village. And at the meantime, we can also explore the Buddhist culture and that place uh, where the old monasteries, since people established their village. And of course, uh, uh, they have a culture and every, every people are so kind and uh, they, they, they give good hospitality. The people are very kind on that reason. Uh, they're most of are their uh, Buddhist. They are from migrate from the Tibet as history from long time, but now anyway now they are Nepalese citizen and the Nepal government is giving already identity card, like long time ago. Yeah. And then uh, after Lang Tang, when we get to the Kangjingri, Kangjing, Gumpa, it is the last point of this trek where we're gonna stop our trek going up and we stay overnight in so be nice in in nice beautiful nice and beautiful tea houses. Yeah, and then uh, we will hike to the point called Kangjingri, which is four thousand eight hundred meter high in the morning after breakfast. When we get on the top of the hill, we have like a three hundred sixty mountain well, view. You mentioned that before. I can just imagine like being able to see all the way around. That must and be we, just breathtaking. Yeah, and and then we also see the glacier mountains, different like um, namely uh, Ella Peak. Uh, Langtang Lirung, uh, Gang Chempu, uh, and then including hundreds of beautiful peaks are the popular at that region. Yeah. And then and then after we explore this beautiful uh, place, we go down to the uh, village where we stop our bag. And we also see, have see the chance to see the egg cheese. There is egg factory. Okay. Egg cheese factory, I mean, not egg factory. Okay. Anyway, cheese is made by the egg. And there is like, uh, the, we can see the light. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Life cheese factory. Yeah. And where we can see and we can buy some for trek also. Or, Do we have home. wine with the cheese? Uh, it will be both are will be very high diet. So can, can, can be yelling in the whole place <laughs> <laughs> after the after taking the cheese. Right. But you still can have some peace, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we we're not allowing to give more cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, good. Yeah, and then um, because when I, as I said, I just did a little bit of reading about this, and um, there's also um a lake there as well, which is quite special. What? what pardon? A lake. Um. Oh, yes. Yes. There is a lake uh, called Gle Lake uh, Langtang Liring Lake. It is so beautiful. Lake. Yeah. Yeah. It is melt from the. It's, it is from the ice and glaciers from the Langtang Liring Mountain. Okay. So, so the people who come in trek in this region, because it's a shorter trek, just maybe um, five or six days for the different ones, um, do, do they often do like another trek as well? Or do they spend some time exploring other aspects of Nepal, you know, like going to Chitwan or Pokhara or those sort of places? Yes, like for example, it's uh, some, some people from the world old, they want to see Nepal and something like mixed, you know. Yeah. They are beginners, but they still want to see the mountains from close distance and yeah. also need to look uh, easy trekking trail. Then yeah. we are, straight away we suggest to Langtang Valley because of yeah. it is mixed 
culture, mountain, everything. And then before trek or after the trek, they can also visit the jungle safari in Chitwan, okay. which is a very popular yeah. one. And then also a couple of days they can visit in Kathmandu to cover the old heritage sites of Kathmandu, like Pasupatna Temple, Bodhana Temple, Istupa, Swambunath, Istupa, Bhaktapur, uh, Kathmandu Dwarvi Square, Patan, they are so popular and every tourist, every single tourist, they want to visit when they come to Nepal and these are nice places. They can connect all, hold this in two weeks if, we, if they want to make. Langdong okay. Valley Trek, yeah. uh, Jungle Safari in Chitawan yeah. and Kathmandu uh, sightseeing, including yeah. Fokha. It, two weeks would be the very good time. Those people who have a certain time and still want to uh, come to Nepal and see these things in autumn yeah. or spring. Okay. So, yeah, because I'm. that's what I'm thinking that particularly um, you know, I, I see people asking questions in, in different groups about, you know, that they seem to be a little bit, um, not scared, but unsure of whether they should come to Nepal to trek because they, they're not sure if they're fit enough, they've never trekked, uh, they think they might be a bit old and all that sort of stuff. So, so starting with something like this would really, would really give someone a taste of what it is like to trek in Nepal um, and then possibly the next time they come they could they could do something a bit longer or a bit more challenging yes this or is right. if they don't if they don't like trekking in Nepal at least they can say they've done it <laughs> I'm sure I'm I'm sure uh, the people when uh, they do their long time are doing like kind of mixed cultural natural yes. and religious trip in Kathmandu of yeah. course, they will plan for next big trip like Everest Base Camp or yes. Annapurna Base Camp, Annapurna Circuit, Manaslu. These are definitely yeah. coming options in future. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, how about we um, finish up there? Because okay. I'm pretty sure that um, people who are watching or listening, listening um, to this on a replay um, have learned a lot about, you know, why... Uh, Langtang region should be on your bucket list and particularly um, if as I said before you're a little bit hesitant about oh should I should I do this can I do this and you don't actually have anyone to come with uh, that can make it quite daunting but please feel free you can reach out to um, either myself or to Dinesh at any time um, we're always available to have a chat and to give you some suggestions and ideas of what's going to work best for you and what do you actually want to achieve out of coming to Nepal. So thank you very much, Dinesh. We will mm -hmm. aim to be back again at our regular time of Tuesday afternoon next week, um, depending on your schedule with all your different groups coming in. And um, I will I will post some information about what we're going to talk about yeah. because we haven't actually um, decided on next week's topic yet. So, yeah. <laughs> so with that, um, I will say um, thank you, everybody, on Facebook. And I'm going to finish up the live now.